makes sense about Shang, uh, because it is essentially the uh, Shadowrunner zone in Shanghai. So there is some very high-class areas, uh, which are not so much Shadowrun friendly as they are, like, um, they are their understanding of anonymity and, like, your business is your own, if you know what I mean. Yeah. 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 Okay. So one of those for a week would be a lot more expensive. Like, you're talking maybe for a single bedroom, it's probably in the region of 500 new in a week. And for a two-bed, it's like 750. I, you want to do one of those? Yeah, no, like I don't mind what blank or high. Yeah, you know plus what? our shit will be safer if you know if you yeah. have to leave something in the room. A place like that will be better. So, Tex, I'll take I'll take the first week on me, and then we'll split it in half if we have to be here longer. Or well, we well we will. So yeah, I'll reimburse you if we're not here longer than. They that. also filter the air and stuff. So yeah, oh. Warren, I assume I've got to pay the equivalent for a double room for myself, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's one fifty a week. Yep, for cool. the like lower end one. Yeah. How much did you say the higher one was? Seven fifty for, for a single. Seven fifty for a double. Yep. I imagine giants so heavy that instead of sliding the beds together, he has to stack them one on top of the other. <laughs> <laughs> giant just pushes them up against the side of the room and sleeps on the floor. Brings a rock circle and shows on the floor. Really. It's like. Or, uh, yeah, you bring two sleeping bags that were, like, you chopped off the bottom of one and tied, you know, sewed it to the other, the other one, and you just basically slipped down into it. My room come with a bath, because Firehead could sleep in that. They come with showers, not oh, baths. Because oh. ours come with a bath. Yours comes with, like, a bath that's, you know, one of those very large ones, that also doubles as, like, a hot tub and things like that. Ooh, and it also has jets. a shower. Oh, shit. So are you guys in a hotel then? Like it's like a like a yeah. high end type. They're hotel. in a high end hotel, yeah. Okay, they're kicks. in the continent. Yeah. yeah, and I'm in the coffin hotel. Just Kix needs like high internet connection for her jazz, right? Mm. Yeah, well, that would be in a high level place. Yeah, I'm willing to. I'm willing to. Uh, ask Amber if she wants to split it and like we'll room in in a in a room on the same floor with uh, she and Tex. Sure. I get the feeling whenever you're around doing your like stuff, uh, Amber like has to look away or turn off her her A or otherwise doing my stuff. Yeah, because she has a uh, what, what's the thing you have again? Simpsons like... Vertigo. Yeah, Simpsons Vertigo. <laughs> so he 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 literally or she literally can't look at like uh, Matrix stuff without going crazy. She gets sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I just make some little blinders for, well, for a Amber. I don't even have AR stuff, so yeah. it doesn't really matter. Besides, I'm mostly I would be mostly locked up in my own little bedroom meditating because I'm initiating again. Well, we're sharing a bedroom. I'll be in the corner then. <laughs> She's in the corner doing like in the a, bathroom. a mystic quest in her head. Just to... Let's Let's throw some blankets at me. Well, I'm the only one left, I think. Firehead. Yeah, you, Murdoch, and Firehead. Do you two want to stay in the industrial shitty? industrial warehouse burning rats? <laughs> <laughs> Should we stay in the warehouse? I. I'll get ill. You're, all, you're already ill, Murdoch. You're already ill. <laughs> Can't get any iller. Yeah, you need the you physical disability to match the mental one. <laughs> You'll keep me warm, Firehead. Yes, I will. Okay, We're going to turn up at the warehouse one time they'll both be like naked apart from boxes just huddled together on the floor. <laughs> like, You'll turn up to pick them up tomorrow and they'll just be like naked with boxes wrapped around them and the warehouse will be on fire and they'll just be <laughs> staring at it. <laughs> okay, um, okay. <laughs> Screw it. Uh, what's the range of D and I? The Matrix. Alright, okay. Uh, so that sums it up, yeah. Yeah. I, I D and I text and say, uh, not text, um, fucking text and say, uh, can you look up information on this? I'm gonna go uh, down to the street level. Look up information on what? The data center. Or at least try to. Yeah. And then, then I turn to text and, and use my mouth and say, for once and say, um. Ooh. A <laughs> little, little slower, Hot. Ollie. You're going too quickly. <laughs> All right, and um, like a slow say, pace. Uh, do you want to do you want to go downstairs and have a drink? 
might as well break it. Do you want to go it. downstairs? Are you too good a bum? No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying go, go have a friendly drink, you know? Oh, yeah, okay. that's how it starts. <laughs> Tex isn't an elf, she isn't yeah. interested. But Tex can turn into an elf, though. <laughs> Is that good enough for she? I don't know. I bet she carries around some, like, plastic ear tips you can just put on someone. <laughs> it's like, it'll do. Like, shh, shh, put these on. So... The data haven you're going to, uh, run by Wujing, is in Huangpu. It's actually in downtown Shanghai. It's in a district. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's located in a very prominent area near basically the Shanghai Museum, um, along a very, uh, a very like corporate and governmental place. So straight up, you can tell without even looking. Like you don't even have to look this up because you can tell and see all the signs because you've been shadow running for a while now. That this is a triple A security center, okay? So none of you are particularly aware of how police and things work in Shanghai, so you'll have to look that up to find out about it. But you can uh, tell immediately this like screams heavily corporate. So. Overall knowledge triads to see if I know anything. Why would the triads know anything about this? No. <laughs> because they're Chinese, Warren. Yeah, yeah look, that's, that's my logical <laughs> jump there. Some we're, racist shit right there, Ollie. We're raiding a triple well, A only. data haven for 20k. Mm -hmm. We're not getting paid nearly enough. Well, the reason you're getting paid only that is because, as I said, I've rolled up the dice to determine how much you get paid. And as I said before, he's going to disable pretty much all of the security. So it's going to get vastly easier than what it should be, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but yes. Wuxing are like, known for spirits, and he's a yeah. maintenance oh, dude. Oh, I, I know, I know. So there will obviously be some resistance, just saying. I'm not going to hand you 20k for free, but I mean, I, I'm not, I know how to GM things. I mean, have a little <laughs> fight in this. <laughs> Salt. He stole your deal there. <laughs> so, uh, anything else you want to try and find out? Uh... Do you know the location of Do, this place? Can I try to find out what their sort of like magical security is? Oh, I mean, like I know AAA or whatever, but like, is there a way that I can find something a little more like? You could just follow what Matrix the, the nature because I don't think any of you have run against them before. So no. yeah, let me assist you with that. You get two extra dice. Ooh. Ha. Ha. Okay, so you're aware that they are the only... Uh, that was an assist for kicks. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Go ahead. I like to think Tex's assist as he sends kicks to the let me Google that for you page. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to fay point it, I guess? Or want to fay point it, fucking Ed. <laughs> you got me saying fay point it. Yeah, legend. So it's a re-roll with, like, the, uh, the Texas not. assists, or... Yeah, you so get 11 no, dice. Yeah, you re re-roll 11 dice, yeah, that's it. Oh. I, I... Can I even click on my token? No. Uh, bring up you don't that. have a token, I can give you your tokens. You to. Thanks, just so I can have my little buttons that have my shadow run roll. I'll even yeah. bring fireheads fire with them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Burning down the house. Not my house. There you go. Thank you. So sorry, Murdoch. <laughs> Are you guys staying in the warehouse then? Or... No, I want to okay. stay. Stay in F one fifty place. I'll pay it all if if needs be. I was going to give you so much time. Sneaking up behind you. Whoop. I was going to make you roll edge, and if you failed it, I was going to give you some debilitating negative quality or something. I know. I'm, I'm paying for one hundred and fifty. I don't even care if I had. You can stay with me. Yeah, yeah, I'll stay with Murdoch. Okay, so you know that uh, out of all the Chinese uh, corporations, Wu Xing is the only megacorp in the Big Ten, as it were, and has a place in the corporate council. Uh, they own a sizable junk of the Pacific Rim. Um, they're known to be quite conservative when it comes to their view or how they try to betray themselves. They have very, you know, specific Chinese ideals, and 
because of that, uh, a lot of the Chinese city states are, you know, actual states that China broke up into, look at them very favorably, and they tend to be the biggest players in town when it comes to China. Uh, they're pretty careful when it comes to Shadowrunners. They have been known to employ them, but for the most part, they do not look favorably on them, and they do not like using them as assets. Um, they're mostly focused on shipping and finance concerns, but as someone already pointed out, they also specialize in uh, magical services and goods. So they're well known, as you said, to employ uh, spirits in a great many things as messengers to outright, uh, you know, tools for use. And it has been noted in the more underground forms, and it's quite well known as well, that there's even like several, you know, basically essentially like YouTube videos almost, or the equivalent of YouTube trib, trib videos on the Matrix, where sometimes uh, shadow runs against uh, the corporation have gone rather public, and there's visible recordings of like strange celestial beings essentially appearing from thin air out of nowhere and like incinerating our throwing lightning bolt at the people who are attempting to, like, uh, extract uh, Wu Jing, like, CEOs, or attack them, or assassinate them, or any of their researchers, or anything like that. So, while they do employ high threat response teams, it's well known that their high threat response teams tend to have mages supported by uh, spirits extensively, okay? So they they go out of their way to employ mages more than most of the megacorps, okay? So if the alarm goes off, there's going to be a spirit HTR there. Post haste. Yes. But that Sounds is why fun. that is why the alarm is going to be utterly disabled for twenty minutes. Not fun. Not fun. Okay, and as per uh, Shadow on Hong Kong, it's also well known that uh, they specialize in a thing called Feng Shui, which is essentially you know, the Basically, the building of buildings or like the construction of rooms and things in certain ways that uh, generate positive cosmic karma and basically create uh, the equivalent of boosted magical zones, if you know what I mean. So it's very likely when you get into the building, you'll get into zones where particular styles or traditions of magic will be far stronger than others, if you know what I mean. So they're quite good at all magic, uh, is the best way to describe it. I'm going to break every single mirror in this building. That would actually probably work. <laughs> to some degree. You know. Turn chairs 90 degrees to the left. Yeah, so they're, they're very good at creating magical zones uh, that benefit magic. And they tend to favor their own styles of magic, which you can probably guess if anyone knows from magical traditions what most of their mages use. Dragons. Wujin. There's literally a tradition that's named after them. Wow. The way, this, when we looked at this building, is it just like a server farm or something? It is a, essentially, it's a multi, um, it's like a huge skyscraper essentially. And a great many different corporations inhabit it. Um, but all of them are subsidiaries of Wujing. So the data haven you're going to isn't actually its in particular, but it's a subsidiary of them. Okay, so it's actually a megacorp like just an a-level megacorp but it's a direct subsidiary of wujing so yeah, it's slightly it's less there. terrifying then yeah are but there it's any there. um companies offices being rented out to anyone that offers public services the first 30 floors of the building are public domain but the one you're going to is in the 55th floor up to the 60th floor it inhabits all five of those floors and like i said everything above 30 is private uh, property and all of them are currently completely let it out to Wujing or its subsidiaries. But yeah, the bot like Wujing has its like every megacorp, it has its hand in a lot of pots. So it's like bottom floors are to do with like agriculture, engineering, consumer goods, chemicals, uh, cyber, you know, ev our matrix gear, everything. So the bottom is essentially the equivalent of almost like a shopping center or a mall, if you know what I mean. But it's like bulk items where people go in to organize deals for entire distribution areas, if you know what I mean. So It's more office buildings than like public, uh, you know, browse and shop kind of thing. Uh, did we have a rough estimate what floor the data we need is on? Yeah, 55 to 60 is where the data 
All right. Uh, Thanks. You could like literally just uh, if you even you don't even need to like do it if you just matrix search the building you get a full detailed like municipal blueprint of it. But even looking at it, you can tell like uh, though you know the very basic utilities are listed. Everything about what's in the building itself is uh, not really mentioned to a great degree. If you know what I mean. How how uh, high is it? Sorry. It goes up to I think it was let me just look it up. It goes up to seventy stories. So it would be. Get to objective. It will be best to go up from down, or no, from from up down, from, from up from the roof if we can get there down. I guess that's if that's safe to do. So, how much would renting a VTOL cost, Warren? Um. Uh, a, lot. I a lot of money, all right. I've got a, I've got a license for one of those. You don't have a driving license. Like the cheapest VTOL, I think you can get is like maybe one or two passengers or something. All right. And it's like four hundred thousand or something to buy it. So like one tenth of that to rent it, maybe. But even renting it is probably close to impossible because they're all like ridiculous availability and forbidden. Also, you'd need like a pilot's license and the ability to actually fly it. So, um, all right. So, when this guy says he's took down most of the security, like, what is that in deal? Basically, he... when you go there, he you just need to tell him when you're going to go in. He's going to do some uh, matrix wizardry, and pretty much all the sensors, the scanners, drones, the cameras are all going to go down. Okay. All right. And according to him, from what he promised you, even the uh, IC inside their servers will be momentarily disorientated. What he means by that, you're not quite sure. He's a technomancer! Sorry. That's all good. Um... So... What do you advise, plan of action wise? What, me? No, like Aaron, uh, Harriel, and Joss. Well, if we can lure him out, then we can bag him, and Technomancers are really valuable too. <laughs> oh, you mean going into the building, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're already thinking about his sweet, sweet, juicy brain. Well, we need to get it? some. Um, I don't know, I was be right back. None of us have actually visited the building yet, right? He, no, no. she, like, walked around near it, I think. That was what he said. Yeah, I, I guess so. Like, I went down to the planet. Well, not yeah. down to the planet, sorry. Yeah, fucking... Street level. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so... Planet. I have space on the moon, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, while well, you were gone, Josh, we went into orbit. <laughs> we're the... actually in space <laughs> right now. Guys, come back. Um, yeah, I was going to say, we need to get some feet on the ground and, like, look at, basically, the flow of people in and out of the building, what kind of deliveries they're getting to the building, all that kind of junk. Just look for any vulnerability we could use, knowing beforehand that the alarm's going to be disabled. So if she's there, then I guess she does some scouting. you want a roll of any kind? If you want to base this um, off a roll, you don't want me to do it, since my perception is terrible. I mean, assuming there's, like, a shitty soy box or something in the area, probably just go hang out there, you know, where we have line of sight to the building and just watch it for a few hours. Well, every single building in the center is a skyscraper, but, yeah, like, a lot of them have, like, uh, the lower floors are essentially, like, uh, consumer places. So you can find a pretty, like, high-end soy coffee shop, yeah, or even a real one, if you have enough money to splash and, uh, you know, observe it for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind doing that. Um, you, how are, like, as of now, how have I been treated, I guess, like, walking through the streets? China is very uh, friendly. Well, I won't say friendly, it's about the same as uh, Seattle, to a greater degree, okay? Oh, um, okay. Like, humans are still very much the dominant, uh, you know, meta-type, if you know what I mean, but for yeah. the most part... Uh, 
China had such a large population when, like, huge scopes of it turned into, like, orcs and elves, they kind of had to adjust very quickly, and it was one of the reasons why communist China essentially collapsed into various city-states, because this was one of the things China couldn't deal with as a social issue. And then after some, like, even brief civil wars and large amounts of social conflict, most people have essentially gotten over it, or at least gotten to the point where they've gotten used to it, if you know what I mean. Oh, right, okay. So yeah, there's like everywhere you go, like every third person is an elf. Everywhere you go, every fifth person is a dwarf. Everywhere you go, every tenth person is a troll, that kind of thing. Alright. Do we see like any free spirits or anything like that walking around? Anything unusual? Uh, unlike, uh, well, it's kind of hard to say, but drones here are a lot more prevalent than in Seattle. Like, as I was saying, like, probably one, uh, one in every ten things you see walking along is a physical, like, bipedal drone. And you see hundreds more, like, uh, roto drones and things flying constantly above the, you know, city, essentially. There's so many, there's so much traffic uh, in drones that, like, there's literally lanes for drones in the sky that they follow along predestined paths on, like, uh, what's that program called again? It's called Grid something other. Grid guide. grid guide. Yeah, Grid Guide. It's essentially like a spatial grid guide that the drones follow to deliver things and stuff like that. I'm, I'm trying on that. Murdoch just like stays here after we all leave. Yeah. Uh, I guess if she and um, Texas sitting out and scouting the place. Yeah. Another thing you've noticed that's just kind of strange to you in Seattle, things like and like most of the other places you guys have been, like even in Sweden and stuff, things tend to taper off between areas. So like uh, one minute you could be walking and like the areas like I, I mean going from like downtown to Redmond, things clearly deteriorate along the way. But in Shanghai things are very different. You see like huge extravagant skyscrapers besides slums, if you know what I mean. So it seems to be per district basis here. So it's a total puzzle of, like, one district can be a completely different income level to the one right beside it, if you get what I mean. So you could, like, yeah. literally jump from one block into another and go from, like, luxury to, like, people living on the streets. And unlike, unlike Seattle, they don't seem to be well guarded, as in, like, people could just seem to wander wherever they go, and no one seems to pay them any mind, but... The, the truly rich never seem to get out of their cars to, like, interact with anyone, and they have guards and everything following them all the time, so. And as I said, like, the truly rich, the really truly rich don't even travel by car, they just go around in VTOLs. There's a lot more VTOLs around than there is in Seattle. Yeah. Um, so, you know how you said that security is going down, I, I'm assuming there's still going to be personnel walking inside, right? Oh yeah, definitely. There will be Wujing's corporate uh, security. Alright. So, is there like a manual? I don't know like if they all uh, automatized it, but like, is there any way for a clerk to manually trigger an alarm? Automated. Yes. Yeah, of course there is. There's like uh, every clerk or security guard or whatever has like a full on comm link and everything else linked straight into their security post, which like they literally just have to flick a switch and an alarm will go off exactly where they are. So, on top of that, uh, in the documents and the details about like security forces in Shanghai and everything else, you figured out that Shanghai doesn't have a Metroplex security force like Knight Errant or Lone Star. Instead, each group inside the city that has political influence because it's run by a council which is heavily construed towards uh, underground organizations posing as like merchant uh, guilds and things like that uh, along with uh, like full-on corporations seem to share power and essentially they've gridded the city and divided it into over a hundred different grids and whoever has jurisdiction in that grid controls the police force there do you get what I mean yeah. So, like, Wujing owns all the police force in the center of town where the building is, basically. They literally own the police force. Whereas where you were, where you were in um, the other place... Uh, what's it called again? Let me find it. Uh, Baoshan 
is with a little bit of running you can essentially see it's ruled by a triad group okay posing as a legitimate uh like shipping company if you know what i mean yeah and they essentially run the police there so obviously it's corrupt beyond belief you got the idea So, Shanghai itself, its governmental figurehead, is like a chancellor who's very clearly a puppet of the council beneath him. And, you know, the corporations and the underground organizations rule Shanghai in a something of a rough truce. Kind of like how the corporate council works. It's more in their best interest to work together publicly, but then backstab each other every chance they get, if you get what I mean, rather than go to all-out war. So... So they're they're used to shadow runners here. All right. Any other questions? Uh. How's the traffic into and out of the building? Okay, so in downtown Shanghai, it's basically got to the point where traffic and public pedestrian walk rate was so high all of the downtown area of Shanghai has been cordoned off as pedestrian walk only, if you know what I mean. Um, so foot traffic into the building is extremely heavy. Like at any one time in like about a 10 minute space, over a thousand people could enter and exit the building. The building that we want to infiltrate or yes. enter. Did you like say that they're public offices or? Yeah, there are public offices on the first uh, 30 floors. Yeah. All right, so... They have everything from like lawyers to like building construction agencies, you know, uh, transportation companies, and they have people constantly going in and out. Um, I guess after like staking out with text and say, hey text, do you want to see uh, what it's like on the inside? Like, I have a sleeping tiger, so I just see. Yeah, yeah you could like literally walk in, just uh, sign a name, they'll thank you for your visit, and you're allowed anywhere on the first 30 floors. Alright, um,. Do you want to see what it's like trying to get to the 31st on the stairs, or without, like, triple arms? Oh, you want to test their security? Yeah, I just want to see, like, walking up to the 31st to see how, like, if we can get there. Alright, well, everything's probably elevator, and I would guess they just restrict elevator access to yeah. the floor you have. There are stairwells, but all the stairwells call, uh, need security cards to unlock the doors. If you guys go in, obviously. And the elevators, likewise, they literally have a... Basically, the way it works is um, you enter a floor in a keypad where you want to go. So if you want to go to like the 31st floor, you type 3-1, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and then if you type anything above the 30th floor, it asks for a uh, combination to unlock that floor. So I guess we'd have to get kicks inside and hack it so we can take us to... Or find need. someone who knows what the code is to the floor you're going to. Yeah. Um. I just thought of a really horrible plan on the fly. We find oh. Dress who... Ollie up as a whore? No, we find somebody <laughs> yes. who works for some security... Whore delivery! Building, knock them out and then put them in a hotel room and like paint the walls with blood and put a dead body on the floor and say that they murdered them. And extort them into doing the job for us. <laughs> so that, that, it, that's it, fucking Quinn level diabolical. Is that from The Godfather too, as well? They do that to a, a senator, don't they? I think do so. They? Yeah, yeah, they wow. uh, put him in a room with a dead yeah, I, was, I was just thinking, how could we blackmail a member of the security team into giving us access? So we could still dress Ollie up as a whore. He'll yeah. be the dead whore. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can play the dead hooker. <laughs> It's like Archer, what was it? It's like they're escorts when they're alive, when they're dead, they're hookers. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so if I walk in, what's the uh, racist of the uh, staff of on like, clerks? Uh, it seems that like the, go the door staff, if you know what I mean, uh, like the secretaries and things, Yeah. seem to be human and elf predominantly. You see maybe now and then the odd dwarf, but very rare. 
As for like the security guards, they're a whole variation of uh, meta humanity. Like you see humans, trolls, orcs. You even see like some of the more rare like meta types of those various variants. Oh, if you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you see even like the odd ogre and things like that too. So, so um, I guess I'd DNI tax and say, what's the likelihood of one of these clerks knowing how to get up to the fiftieth floor? Say that again? What's uh, the likelihood of one of these uh, clerks knowing the codes to get to the floors that we need? You think a random guy in the building is going to know how to get to the... I just thought, like, they're, they're going to need, like, people who join, like, as we work there, will have to get told. Or, like, if they're going to a meeting... One of those floors, someone's gonna have a to meeting in the server farm. Maybe oh, yeah. the guy who does maintenance on the computers would know. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying who in front of the find the guy that maintains it, yeah. And like, yeah, I don't see skin. any of the computer maintenance guys around. Yeah. No, there's no one that jumps out as like Matrix tech guy anywhere. Are there any, are there any like that wear security officer uniforms or anything like that? Is running to what, sorry? That wear, like, officer uniforms, like, private security, anything along those uh, lines? They're, they're all Wujing corporate security, and, yeah, every now and then you, you see, like, someone who's very clearly, like, a cut above the average grunt, like, a lieutenant or something. You never see anything like the equivalent of a captain or even a commander. But, like, there's the odd person who's clearly, like, in charge of uh, this area security or this floor security, that kind of thing. I you mean, can presume. You can presume there's probably a lieutenant on every floor. If you know what I mean. So. Yeah, I mean, if we set our sights on one of those guys, maybe when he's leaving the building at the end of the day, we can have app. Maybe Amber could bump into him and cast um. Fuck it, mind probe. That's the word I'm looking for. But if she throws it at low force, he might not even notice it's happened. And we could pull the codes. Presumably, he knows the codes to get into the stairwells. Yep, very likely. Though you need a key card to get into the stairwells, you could rob that off him, I suppose. Yeah, someone could uh fly of hand in as well. Um he's got the most best uh fucking agility sleight of hand. Oh uh, palming, sorry, not I've All got right. seven dice in it. Uh I don't think no I don't have it, but I have seven agility, so I have eleven it's... dice in palming. Alright, yeah. Plumbing. Good. I was about to say, if, if Giant was the best at, like, sneakily taking shit from people's <laughs> pockets, I was going to throw this out the window. Oh, palming. Sorry, I thought you said plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shadow, plumbing. It's a shadow run skill. To plumbing We're skills? here to plumb the, uh, data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a skill in 6th edition. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Uh, oh, um... You have to be an Italian to do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I guess I'll, uh, like, try and, like, be nondescript inside and, uh, like keep eyes on the lieutenant and well that's if Tex agrees to this plan and like I'll tell him when he's like about to leave and which way he's going and such if I can follow him and, and like if he goes into like a staff only room then I don't follow him in there but yeah you want me to swipe his key card? uh yeah if he comes outside and like you know yeah so you know like just on a well I mean a brief glance like without even having to like really look into it you can tell like Everywhere you look around, and like the upper ceiling and around like the area, like the edges of the walls and things, you can clearly see the telltale, telltale, sorry, like little optical strips which are clearly sensors. Uh, so you're not quite sure that like, well, you're pretty sure because you, I mean, you know, you you got an experience of this from your last run, that this is probably a sensor which probably tracks the location of uh, most everyone of importance in the building. So it's very likely the security guards are in some way being monitored and their movements are being tracked throughout the entire building. So it's a good idea that if you take the key card while it's in the building and try to take it out the doors, it's very likely the security will know someone's lifted it and is moving it out the door, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to hopefully... Oh, well, no, he wouldn't take it home with him, with him would he? It'll maybe, like maybe, maybe he makes it inactive, it's hard to tell. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's why I thought we should hit him when he's leaving the building to, like, go home. Just bump into him by mistake. 
for locally, I guess, that he knows the codes, the elevator, but then we have to use the elevator, which probably isn't the best idea. So, you can tell, because you already downloaded, like, uh, the municipal, like, brief plans, that when this building was built about uh, a decade and a half ago, it was designed so that the 40th to the 45th floor would be essentially ops. It's called ops, and one of the details of ops was security. So he may have the code to be able to get up to there, but it's very obvious that the way this building was designed, that the further you go up the building, the higher security clearance is needed, if you know what I mean. I'm guessing a lieutenant on ground floor one isn't judged that important, whereas yeah. an lieutenant on ground floor on floor 30 is somewhat more important. Maybe or they're all the same, and they may just be able to get the codes to get into the security section at the yeah. most, and that would be it. All we need is a guy, a Matrix guy who runs maintenance on this shit. So we need to yeah. find out where the uh, fuck he, who, or who the fuck he is. And like the highest levels are management. They're like literally CEO yeah. penthouses and things like that. So. Yeah, I guess over the course of the time they're there watching and they go into the building, do they see anyone that looks like they're a member of the maintenance staff? Uh, security maintenance or like maintenance maintenance, like janitors and shit? Uh, either. Uh, yeah, there's like tons of janitors, uh, well not tons, but like every now and then a couple go in and out for a shift, a couple go in and uh, back out, like it seems like it's a pretty steady stream of everything you would imagine, but no one really jumps out as like a Matrix tech uh, of any description. How likely is that such people like live on, in site, on site of these places? They may not even live on site, they may just simply be spiders which essentially manage it remotely from somewhere else completely. Alright. And the only people that go into the place might be like very high up techs of some description, who just like make sure the CPUs don't overheat or whatever. Or strip out like old hard drives and things. Or whatever the equivalent is in the sixth world. Yeah, I think, so have, I think they have take care of the hardware. Like, I think they have like quantum SSDs at this stage. Well, I think we should still, I mean, if we can't see anyone else who immediately, yeah, if we can't get our hands on a Matrix security guy, get the keycard off the lieutenant, and then just go in with kicks, and hopefully any door that we find between us and going past the 45th security floors, we can just hack our way through or something. The... If you, got to, if you got to the security floors, and you got to the very top of them, they're right below the Matrix ones, so if you could get through that one... Stairwell up to the next, you'd be in the Matrix place because they're yeah. right on top of each other. So. How does the stairwell star stairwell work? Does it like bring you out onto the actual floor and then you go back up, or is it like on the side so you can choose what floor you want to go out on? It's on the side and it goes up the building. All right, so, so we could just walk up straight to the uh, 55th and then hack the door if that is possible. Yes, but you can obviously presume like as you go up, the encryption levels on the door, yeah. you know, security increases. So. But if our uh, good friend has, like, hacked, well, well, we'll be hacking their security for 20 minutes, then we could always just burn the door down with one of those welders. Yep, it's yep. not a possibility. Yeah. So that's, I guess that's my idea, like, we just sign ourselves in under fake names. Like, we wouldn't have to show a license, would we? Um, they do record your sin when you come in, basically like the idea is when I said write your name in the sixth world, yeah. that's the equivalent of they ping your comm link, ask yeah. for a mark and they just take your sin and name like you did at that roadblock way back when if you remember. Alright, so then I would take my rating free sin in. Yeah. And not my international flight one, so. Th that's my idea if anyone. Oh yeah, it sounds fine by me. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a plan. God, I actually came up with a plan that people agree to. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> it's mostly construed on the bit that the quote unquote technomancer that Aaron thinks he is is going to work as magic. Um, Alright, so I mean, I don't have a map for this, so I don't know how you want to do it. Because <laughs> I had the map, but I just can't upload the fucking thing. Just draw lines and, you know, like, here's a door, here's <laughs> a, a, a dude. Gotta be, gotta be a lot of lines, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just, I mean, the, the major ones. Or not. Mm. 
we could just have this as just a two-hour session of prepping for the next session we have. Yeah, I mean, if you guys want to buy anything for the run, I mean, we could do that now. I mean, I can draw the lines, but it's going to take a while. No, okay, never mind. Yeah, uh, Hariel of... still hasn't done any astral uh, recon. Yeah, you can do that too. Yeah. yeah. True. Considering it's Wuxing. Have you, uh, have you ever had this encountered and this problem that Chord reset in your router? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have, yeah. I did, right. I did everything you can imagine that you think of, believe me. Alright. Either word is correct to say which way around, uh, Ollie. Oh, Alright, all right. All right, good. Rotor. Router. 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 Oh, uh. I'm sorry, but Aaron, how do you say roof again? Roof. <laughs> roof, yes. <laughs> like cook, but with an R and an F. That is fucking adorable to me, I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what word? Roof. They it's call the roof of a building roof, 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 roof in roof. Seattle, apparently. It's yeah, actually. So most of the northern United States. Uh, what's the background count? Uh, it's actually quite good in the center of Shanghai because it's been deliberately created to be that way. So it's only a background count of minus one while you're on the streets. What What is the small nice. building in which you uh, house your car? Garage? Yeah, a garage. You say garage? Garage, man. <laughs> the garage. 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 <laughs> That's the etymology of the word, man. It's French. Fuck the French. Oh, Do I invite oh, you into my garage? Do, do you eat a croissant or do you eat a croissant? <laughs> <laughs> I eat a croissant. <laughs> oh, for fun. Okay, so I. Astrally project around the building. See, see what's up. Do it up stealthily. With it. Yeah, go ahead and roll. <laughs> Don't get noticed, Amber. Like, like last time. Yeah. <laughs> you got one job. Oh God. Okay. Let me let me edge that. All right. One fucking job, and you fucked it up. All right, bit better. All right, so you see uh, very clearly that there are definitely astral barriers uh, on this building. Not all the way around in a vast, huge thing, but you can see that various sections of the building have clearly been uh, barriered by different sources, if you know what I mean. You can tell mm -hmm. just by looking how the barriers look, you can tell either different spirits or spirits bound to different mages uh, had a hand in the security in this building. And even looking at it right now, it's almost as if it's a labyrinth of overlapping security. But you can see none of it, or almost none at all, on the lower 30th levels. But the further you go up the building, the the, the like more ridiculous it becomes until like the top level where the CEO and management penthouses and work areas are. It becomes almost like a, a fortress. And you can even see like at least over maybe a dozen spirits on the top levels, specifically guarding the CEO areas, if you know what I mean. Um... As for the other thing, spirits go in and out all the time. You can immediately tell they're messenger spirits of some kind or task spirits. You're not quite sure what their job is or what they do. But they hurry along very quickly, enter, and then leave a few minutes later. I Others... know what task, task spirits are. Yeah, I know. You don't know what they're doing, though, but you get the idea. Um, others are clearly watcher spirits of some description, and others are definitely guards of some kind. But there are definitely spirits about. There's more than you can probably see and they're they, they're quite animated as and they seem to go around doing what they're doing but uh there's definitely a good level of magical security on this building and the the floor we intend to go to how... the floor you intend to go to is does have a astral barrier around it it seems to be mostly internal however from what you can see uh, it, it's like so bright it blares out true like the physical manifestation of the building It's not on the outside. It's on the inside and it seems to be protecting particular objects within if you get what I mean um, But besides that uh, You do see the odd spirit or two that seems to be devoted to that level of the building um, how, how many spirits in that level? I 
anything else you want to? Um. Well, I don't know. Did he catch the force of yeah, the spirits the force coming and going? Uh, the average. Like the average force of the spirits um, depends on what they're doing. The messenger ones seem to be quite low force, like almost negligible. The other ones on the... well, the ones on the very top are very powerful, like 10 plus, but they seem to be very much devoted to just protecting the upper floors. The one in the mid sections, which seem to be the more Wu Jing's personal areas, uh, are anything between, you know, roughly 4 to 6. You see... The odd spirit that is quite bright in the astral, and you can tell they're about eight plus, okay? But they don't seem to be devoted to the data service. Okay. But who knows if you like physically attack the building? I'm sure they'll all react in some way or another. Yeah. And what's the force of the barrier uh, in the data server? Level. The force of the barrier in the data level server is 7. All of the barriers, there's a couple of different ones, but they're all 7. I guess that's everything that I'm, I can remember right now. Yeah. Oh, and uh, like I said, you can see bright spots in this particular area. And they're definitely a tradition of magic where the mana in the area has been heightened, if you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you, you can like literally see like magical energy flowing into the building and up various uh, clearly designed conduits into various sections of the building. It's building on like a ley line. Kind of. It's basically like the ley line has essentially been diverted, or its energy has been sapped a bit into this area. And the focal point of the magic is blaring to you, Amber. It's the Wuxing um, corporate symbol at the center of the tower at the top. It's it's like very well crafted and designed, and you can clearly tell it's been like hand painted with Chinese calligraphy and other things like that. And it glows blares in the astral as like a magical font, if you know what I mean. We should just steal that, it's probably worth more than anything. Yeah. <laughs> Made out of like orange chalk. Well, you'll need like five or six VTOLs to carry it off, so. We take it in chunks, Warren. We don't take it whole. <laughs> we go bury it under Seattle and summon some rats. Create a heart of magic. <laughs> yeah. That's what happened, you guys stole it and then brought it there. <laughs> we were just hiding until we could fence it, I swear. The maiden of Seattle is Amber. <laughs> God, I just remember reading the Shadowrun story once. There was this awakened plant, and it was like, it got spirits high, but I can't remember what the fucking name was. You're trying to get the spirits high? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's not the plan, that's a new one. I mean, if you can do that, I'd be totally for it. Ghost weed. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the fucking name. I remember the story, though, so I'll have to look it up later. But yeah, they yeah, were raiding a building that had really good spirit security, so they got the, the spirits baked out of their mind so that they were shit at their job. I mean, if you can totally do that, I would be all for that, because that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'll find the name later. Looking through the four ebooks, but I'm not seeing anything. We can always just use Opium Den if we have to. <laughs> can get anyone high. Yeah, does anyone know Opium Den? If no. we could like find a Talismonger, they can give us like some Opium Den potions or something. Just throw yeah, that's true. <laughs> Eat ecstasy spirits. <laughs> Fuck it up. That'd actually be pretty cool. It'd be like a like a magical drug, basically, like an Opium Den potion. We just got a box that says spirit kibble on it and pour them a bowl. <laughs> yeah. Come on! Eating time. Put it in the sprinkler systems. Actually, we could like offer them radical reagents but lace it with something else. Shadow one, where are you drug spirits? 
Actually, yeah, there's no reason why a, uh, actually a radical reagent couldn't be a linchpin for an alchemical preparation. Can anyone, like, yeah, do chemistry? That is why you hire someone else to do it for you. Alright. Because alchemy sucks. Yeah, no one takes alchemy. It's terrible. It's a real shame. Maybe I'll make it better in some adjoining book, but I doubt it. It just needs some fixing, like, you should be able to... They should last longer. Yeah, and you should also make, be able to make preparations of spells you know that you can cast, because splitting yeah. it is just ridiculous. Yeah, if they hadn't made it a different spell and they'd made it last longer, it, it would be totally usable. Yep. So do you guys want to buy anything for the run? Or have any more I'm questions? Thinking, do we need any breaking and entering gear? Got lockpick Cat set. suit. We all could go in in cat suits for the laser bit. <laughs> well, oh, Mr. Yeah. Fa Mr. Fang has promised uh, the world in terms of breaching the Matrix security. So what you'll have to deal with, Kix, will be quite light if what he says goes to plan. But I'm you're glad. you're basing everything on his linchpin that he says he can do what he says he can do. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I would assume that he's actually good at his job since Oren hired him. Yeah, correct. Well, one so thing I'd say, I know, better mage. I know me and um, Aaron have got mini welders. Maybe pick up a couple more, just in case we do like get fucked in terms of the matrix security, and we're just like fuck it and burn through the doors instead. <laughs> yeah, like four of us will, with mini welders will go faster than two. You try to get down the building, but the elevator's locked, so you just weld the floors until you keep going <laughs> down. <laughs> that might not. I've been looking at falling damage lately, and if we get high, if we are in enough trouble, I'm jumping out the window, <laughs> and I'm going to try and soak the falling damage. Like even grappling uh, down, like would have killed like all of us, maybe not me. And far ahead, Joe just jumps out of like the 60th floor, falls, <laughs> like soaks like 200 damage, and just stands up. Yeah, walks off. Yeah. What is? Is it like one damage per meter or something? Yeah, it is. I could okay, theoretically well, jump out of the 30th window and if I pre edge survive. And be conscious. Yeah, that'd be what, 10 meters or something? 30 well, meters? I, I, was assu I was assuming a meter per floor, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was, did the math wrong there. So yeah, 30 meters, yeah, yeah that's a lot of damage. Yeah, because if I, I could meter. soak 30 down to less than 10 on a... <laughs> Very we wouldn't be able to stand up if the floor yeah. was a meter. <laughs> yeah, it's this one. Yeah, floor's got to be three meters, right? So it would be ninety. So it'd be ninety. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The math I did had each floor at one foot. Uh, general, <laughs> general standard floors in most skyscraper buildings is like three and a half meters. So. Yeah. So the thirtieth floor would be like a hundred damage. Uh, I. I will pick up a uh, mini welder. It's availability two, so if Tex wouldn't mind, or can I just find that? You could go buy your own mini welder. <laughs> yeah, they're, right. li they're literally be like a hardware store. You could just literally walk into. I'll take a mini welder. Okay, there you go. All right, I'll take a mini yeah, welder. Yeah, I'm convenient. You can beat the two dice if you have to roll a favorability. Although, what's your charisma? It's five. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can buy a welder. What's the availability of the welder? Like two, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm not even gonna roll that. You just walk. Oh, no. Are you telling me you can't make your fingers hot enough to just weld through the floor with? I don't. know, Could I do that? Mechanically, apparently not. No. What? Oh, okay. Because I don't know. A welder is like it's a plasma, not. So welder, the mini welder just mechanically yeah. just does twenty five damage to structures, basically. It's, it's 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 it should be renamed to plasma coder, and it would make yeah. It yeah. And so if you can do twenty five damage, then you can mimic the effects of a mini welder. Aren't most the uh, welders like plasma now anyway? Uh, there's a lot of different types of welders depending yes, on what like, the application is. you know, slopes, so. Yeah, well, I know that at least we have plasma welders, though, don't we? So yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Should have called yourself Plasma Head. Oh shit! Yeah, that's what I'm I did. Wrong. I'm gonna get myself a crowbar because it means I have twenty strength when I'm trying to break doors. Yeah. So that could be fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> oddly enough, you can get a chisel, which does the exact same thing, but it's tiny. 
That's ridiculous. Apparently, chisel and crowbar are the same price. Yeah. But yeah, they literally do the exact same thing mechanically, but one fits in your pocket. <laughs> the closest uh, thing you're talking about with like plasma welder is like an acetylene welder. Or yeah. cutter, if you know what I mean. It's yeah, like high, pl high energy Plasma gas. cutters. Yeah. High energy gas is plasma, so... Uh, so, so wait, is it just going to be us, like, with free, like, me and Tex having mini welders going through, and then there's Giant just chiseling the door away? <laughs> I'll just Safe pop like. the fucking hinges off for the single smash. Um, so you said these doors, Warren, they've got, like, passkeyed maglocks. Yeah, well, the ones Swipe. that you saw, the ones that you saw on the floors that you were like allowed to go to, uh, without causing suspicion, were just like normal doors, like you know, large bulky fire doors, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. that had uh, you know key cards that needed to be swiped, and then the door, you know, unlocked, the mag lock swung open, and the guy went in. Uh, uh, when the door like automatically closed itself, the door immediately locks itself again. That's all of it, all right? Yeah. And that's it's like a, like you could break through the door with a bit of force. Uh, like quite easily, but you, you it's obvious to presume the further you go up, the more intense of the doors will become, if you know what I mean. How how like how much of the door does the of the wall does it take up, if that makes sense? How big is the door? Yeah, in yeah. Like three and a half meters wide maybe. It's pretty and like how, big double doors, if you know. How big is the wall? It's like if it's Well it depends it? like thickness? Uh yeah, I, well like um like, if the door's in the center of the wall, yeah, how much of the wall are, is on the either side of it? It depends what floor you go to and what the layout of the floor is, Ollie. Oh, you know okay. I mean? Yeah. I was thinking that maybe the wall might be easier to break through in some ways. Um, which of us is, like, a, a locksmith person? Tex. Tex. Tex is, like, yeah, your utility you... guy. Yeah, Aaron, have you got an auto picker? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Okay. Don't need to pick one of those up, then. What, uh, what's a monophilian chainsaw? Is that useful? Could be. They're kind of like, uh, mini welders. Yeah, it's it's a worse mini welder, basically. But it costs more. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense. But you can, you can use a monofilament chainsaw as a melee weapon as well, which All is right. why it costs more. Uh... I'm confident if you were creative and worked hard enough, you could turn a plasma cutter into a weapon. Mm -hmm. I would think more tortured as a device, but yeah. Grapple check here. Mini welder to the face there. So yeah, I can't see really any breaking and entering gear that we really need to pick up. Given what mm -hmm. we know. Um, um, it would, would depend the... if they have like some sort <sighs> of fancy lock that we can't get through at some point, but hopefully the uh, Matrix Specialist handles that. Oh, yeah. a sequencer. Uh, uh... He did warn you he won't be able to turn off everything, but he will severely weaken it, if you know what I mean. Like, all the locks and stuff should be child's play, but anything else uh, is why he kicks us around, if you know what I mean. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, like, like I don't have a cellular yeah. glove molder, you know, shit like that. Yeah, if yep. we come up against anything that needs that, that's when we bust out the mini welders and just go through the fucking wall. About a sequencer, like if we do want to try and hack. Uh, I think sequencers can be just done with a normal lockpick test instead. Okay. Same thing with the keycard copier. Like, there's certain locks that you can just crack open the case and pick the lock. By, like, it, rewiring the it actually tree. says a sequencer is required to defeat keypad maglocks. Oh, is it? Yeah. Sequencer is a plus one to its rating. That's if you have it on wireless. All right. Pretty cheap, to be fair. It's only 250 per rating. It goes it's up to also, six. Yeah. Threatening free after, so a hard find for a decent one. Yeah, 18 forbidden for a rating. Are you talking about for keypads? Yeah, keypad bag locks. Yeah, it says, um, unless the code is known, defeating a keypad requires rewiring the internal electronics. This means cracking open the case and then rewiring the circuits. Uh, a mag lock sequencer may also be used instead. You sure you so don't want to just, like, find a major guy? You can just lockpick those. 
find what his tastes are and then whore one of you out. That seems to work, like, every <laughs> single time. Who knows, maybe he'll be into, like, really bulky, racist Yeah, weird. Trolls. In the item description wow. it says it's required. Fucking editors. Yeah. I'm not even joking, we've whored someone out twice in Aaron's campaign and it's worked every time. <laughs> Actually, mechanically seducing people is easier to do than, uh, like, than, like break in and shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you need to evolve? Like, if you wanted to seduce someone? Seduction. There's um, actually seduction. Yep. And is there's, like, okay, more yeah. ways to get situational modifiers with that, because you're, like, flattering them and everything's beneficial. Yeah. Is it, is it I like, an actual advanced, like, uh, speciality or something? It's a skill, so... It's a specialization no, it's, of conning. Oh, it's a specialization yeah. of conning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Which is six, awesome. I have six dying cons, so... Yeah, what I'm yeah. gonna specialize in. Yeah, later. in our last run, we had our face strippers dress up as a stripper and go in and dance for all the workers in this warehouse, so they got out of the way, so we could break in and steal shit. Hot. Mhm. Mm and then we used Miss Ivy for something even worse that we won't get into. <laughs> Dark times. Yeah, desperate measure. I mean, I can't see anything we desperately need to buy, provided the Matrix security is weakened. And if it isn't, then we're pretty fucked anyway, to be honest, because then the Spirit HDR is going to be roasting us alive within I don't seconds. Know. That's when we jump out the window, I think. Yeah. I just turn my skimmers onto full. And so we should all just buy one. parachutes? It might not be a bad idea, to be honest. Hey, not, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, how much yeah, why, why not? Cost? Yeah. Uh, no totally buy parachutes. There's no default parachute as far as I know, yeah. Which is weird given that Bed the freefall sheets. skill, which specifically mentions a specialization for parachuting. Yeah. A, a, a grapple gun, maybe? No. Yeah, the closest thing is like a vehicle which is like a glider, but that's about it. It's like the Ares Nightwing or something. Or the Only, only in Shadowrun will I look up how much a parachute costs. <laughs> So, yeah, apparently a good parachute costs between $250 to $450. So I'll go ahead and say like 300 yuan. Makes sense to me. Okay, I'm buying a parachute. Um, yep. Fuck it, yeah, totally. Sure. How much? 300. 300 yuan. Couldn't I just levitate myself? Oh yeah, I have levitated. Before we hit the ground or something. Yeah, you could do that. Actually, um... <laughs> Warren, can I get one of those? Because I could use freefall. With freefall's um, keys off body, doesn't it? Um, I think it does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is body, so I could do that untrained. Can I get one of those glider suits? <laughs> the those guys on YouTube make those videos where like die, they dive between like cliffs and shit, and it looks dangerous. Yeah, man. As fuck. I want giant to glide out the window, and I can use my skimmers to like direct myself in the air. I'll become a jet. <laughs> All right, Google. How much do so, glider, so awesome. how much do glider suits cost? <laughs> Autobots roll out. Wait, are you on about like squirrel suits or? I told you, man. Uh, he sexually identifies as a helicopter. This is the first step <laughs> in the <this laughs> transformation. Wing suits. They're called wing suits. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Wait, the most fun you can have in Far, far Cry. It's actually a wing suit specialization. Free fall. <laughs> Wait, what? Seriously? Yeah. Well, then, there ha is there like a cost for them anywhere now? Nope. Of course there isn't. Wing. There's apparently, if you put search wing, there's a throwing knife ammunition. Ammunition. It was close, I guess wing but... suits are about a thousand bucks. Uh. Yeah, okay, so I looked up the thing and apparently uh, there's like a course for it. And the learning course specifies that it's uh, like nearly 2,000 US dollars and that. A wingsuit specialized for your body because they have to make them per person apparently costs 120 euro or dollars. Sorry, so I'm gonna say it's like 120 yeah. million. Okay, I buy a wingsuit for giant, <laughs> it's gonna fly everywhere now. Yep, uh, but what is the surrounding uh, what you call it like, um, skyscrapers and that? Yeah, yeah, skyscrapers cool. like for a long while. Yeah. All right, so there's no there's no one that goes up to like the fifty floor, and we could like escape onto that one's roof or anything, you know. Well, every skyscraper here is owned by a mega corp in some way. Oh, so yeah, fucking so it'd be hard to break into. Yeah, and all the megas in the area you're going to are all owned by Wujing. So, all right. like the the five or six around it are all owned by. It as okay, well. man, I'll just fly out the window and deploy chaff and distract them whilst you guys escape. 
I'll cut up a load of tin foil for you later. Giant has literally yes. become a Jeff. Yeah. Because <laughs> wow. it worked really well together, man. I can glide and use the skimmers as like my propulsion system. Yeah. Can you pro propel yourself upwards, though? No, I wouldn't be able to get any like lift, but right. I'd be able uh, to glide wait, pretty do, well. Do I need a wingsuit as well? Because I'm your baby bird, right? <laughs> I'll just hold you in my arms as I fly. <laughs> Uh, well, you need, you need to extend you your there. arms to, like, fly, though. Yeah. You can hold him more like the point. neck. <laughs> yeah, just hold on to me while I glide. Right on his back. Wait, can I just get a saddle? Yeah, um, what's the name of the dragon out of the never-ending story? Um, oh, Falcor. 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 Yeah. Falcor. Falcor. Yeah! 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 <laughs> Was he Good. supposed to be a dragon? Yeah, he's a luck, he was a... He's a luck oh, dragon. Yeah, he or wish dragon. Dog. Dog. He looks like a fucking dog. dog. He did yeah. look like a dog. <laughs> he did look derpy as fuck. It's about oh, I've yeah. never seen that film. I just remember when he crashed into like... I can't even remember. He like crashed into the ground for some reason. That movie was yeah, fucking Yeah, the mountain where he met the rock people. When his yeah. horse gets sucked into the mud. Oh, that was the worst. Atreyu! Yeah. Artex! He as a child. Anyone oh, see that guy. film The Black Cauldron when they were a kid? So, oh, yeah. I remember the name. Cause yeah, it's a fair. Uh, I, I forget what company it did, but it was like it was supposed to be a kids movie, but it was it fucking was... brutal and dark as fuck. If I remember, like <laughs> full of really morbid things. And it was like a cartoon movie, and I remember like it got a lot. It didn't do well because it was like really adult, but it was centered at kids. It was very weird. Yeah, I remember watching this. By the way, I'm gonna say this wingsuit. I got it in Seattle, and it was like. I got a surplus one that was hugely sized because it was very difficult to find. But I didn't look at what it looked like, and it arrived, and it's covered in like the Star Spangled Banner. Which is wow. Super amazing. Yes. <laughs> it's a cast wingsuit. Yeah. Has anyone seen the animated film uh, of the Plague Dogs? No. No. From 1982, no. and you will you'll not want to watch this film. It's horrendous. Two dogs escape from a laboratory and are hunted as their possible carriers of the bubonic plague. Oh. It's a cartoon Lovely. for kids. <laughs> Is it as bad as a Serbian film? Probably no, not. Uh, <laughs> what from that description said that it could be worse than the Serbian film? Like? <laughs> Nothing. Literal torture porn. Oh yeah, that's what like film is essentially snuff porn, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, I never watched all of it. I never watched the point blank because I read the description. I was like, yeah, no. yeah, why would you watch any portion of some sort of stuff? Because I think it was on YouTube. I <laughs> can't wait to fly. This is going to be amazing. Alright, well, I mean, if there's nothing else anyone wants to buy or wants to do, I mean, I'd rather wait until I can upload shit and get us enough, so. Yeah, that's cool. Understood. Yeah. We're basically prepared, aren't we? Let me see if I can upload again. So we're never I'm prepared. Gonna, I'm just going to check. <laughs> Something will go wrong. Yeah. I kind of want it to now, though. Nope, still won't let me upload. Let's go see if he replied to my email. I just can't wait to fight in this urban brawl thing. That's gonna be cool. Yeah, I have a really cool map for it as well. It's got like death pits and everything. You're gonna Ooh. love it. Ooh. I think Giant's gonna go full on barbarian for this one. Can I just levitate people and put them in the death thing? You can do anything that you legally can think of. Mm. Bearing in mind, people have a thing called counter spell. So, all right. Mm. Uh, no, I can't upload anything. Guy hasn't replied to me, so we're screwed. Um, guess that's it for this week then. Uh, you don't okay. get any karma or new, and obviously because you haven't done anything yet. But, mm. yeah. It's been very could... fun anyway. Thank you very much, everyone. Mhm. Mm Thank you. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye-bye.